Welcome back to the channel everyone. I'm Skylar James and today we're going to be talking about Seeking Alpha and why a recent Harvard Business Review article says that women are the key to attaining that alpha. Let's first start with the term Seeking Alpha. Many of you may already be familiar with it. If not, it's a rather simple concept. To seek alpha is to look for returns greater than if you were to invest in the standard asset class. An example would be if you invested in the S&P 500 index and it returned 10%, or if you made your own portfolio and it returned 11%. That 1% difference is alpha. If you consistently find alpha, your financial future brightens significantly. So going back to my opening statement, how are women the key to alpha, you might ask? Well, Harvard Business Review published a study where they evaluated 163 multinational companies over a 13-year period. They looked at the male-female gender mix at the top level of management. They analyzed R&D expenses, their merger and acquisition rates, and shareholder letters. They compiled all of this data to see if there were trends they could identify in the company's long-term strategies based on the gender makeup at the top of management. What their research revealed was quite interesting. As the companies added more women into C-suite positions, management's decision-making had a, and I quote here, propensity for risk-taking that decreased by 14%, while openness to change increased by 10%. Okay, so that's a pretty interesting first point. To support these data points, the researchers look at the company's willingness for mergers and acquisitions and R&D. Mergers and acquisitions is traditionally a more risky and brute force type approach to gaining market share or new technology. And what their research found was that women-centric management teams were less likely to participate in these. On the flip side, research and development is considered more risk averse in a form of strengthening the company from the inside. And lo and behold, the female-centric management teams were substantially more likely to invest in R&D. As a whole, the more female-centric teams were focused on knowledge building rather than knowledge buying. Based on the study, there are a number of reasons that women entering senior management tend to be more open-minded and more risk averse. Number one, they've had historical disadvantages in the workplace. This prepares them to come to the table with novel, out-of-the-box ideas, and as such, they've developed an eagerness to disprove stereotypes of timidness. Number two, the hypervisibility of being a minority in underrepresented group has taught women to be more cautious in decision-making. This avoids risk of failure under more intense scrutiny. Number three, female executives tend less toward tradition and therefore are more interested in challenging the status quo. As a caveat, the study does make it clear that these are generalities, and while they are accurate from a statistical standpoint, there are obviously exceptions to the rule where female-led organizations can run counter to the outline points so far. At this point, you're probably thinking, okay, that's cool, but what does this have to do with a finance video? And luckily, the answer is everything. We as investors are constantly seeking alpha. How can we improve our portfolio with stronger returns and less risk? And that leads us to another study by the United Nations looking at 13,000 firms in 70 countries and it found that those firms who tracked and improved their gender diversity in management also saw an increase in company returns by as much as 20%. So what I'm advocating for is that each of us, as investors, take a look at our portfolios and put the companies we've invested in through that gender equity lens. This is one of those rare alpha generating ideas that allow us to be socially progressive while still being fiscally conservative. A great starting point is the MetLife Gender Equality Report that was released at the end of 2020. I'll link this below in the description. It evaluates the S&P 500 companies and highlights the top 25 with strong gender equity programs. They include many household names like 
Bank of America, General Mills, and American Express. So I'm curious what you guys are doing in your effort to seek alpha and build a more diversified portfolio. If you found this content helpful or entertaining, please hit that like, subscribe, or leave a comment down below. Thanks for joining.